Welcome to the France 20 Get Debate. Is a coup unfolding in Egypt? The question after the military's deadline for a power sharing deal expired. You're watching images from Tahir Square, where night is falling. That's in the heart of Cairo. Supporters of embattled President Mohamed Morsi claim a putsch is indeed underway. The Reuters news agency reporting that uh, armored vehicles, personnel carriers have been deployed in an area near a pro uh, Mohamed Morsi rally in Cairo, far away from this one. Yes, there are competing uh, rallies taking place once again this Wednesday. The Egyptian army installing barbed wire around the uh, uh, bunker where uh, Mohamed Morsi has uh, been working a Republican guard compound where he's been working uh, this Wednesday. Um, the army putting state radio and television under guard. The website of state-run newspaper Al-Aram reporting earlier that several leaders of uh, Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood have been placed under military surveillance with a foreign travel ban on the Islamist group's top leaders. Now, um, at the same time, um, earlier in the day, uh, there was a... Uh, a aid to Morsi telling the Reuters news agency that uh, Egypt's first civilian head of state was still conducting presidential business in a compound of the Republican Guard. This is in suburban Cairo. Morsi, um, whose office uh, earlier in the day in a statement offered a coalition government as part of a, co uh, a solution to the country's standoff. Welcome, everybody. You're watching France 24. We are gauging reactions uh, from all sides in Cairo. Most importantly, we are waiting to hear from the head of the army, the defense minister, General Sisi. He was due to make a statement, and he could do so any time. We'll also see uh, what are the reactions elsewhere, such as in Washington, which underwrites the military in Egypt to the tune of $1.3 billion a year. And we're going to weigh up, of course, the prospects for Egypt's democracy. Today in the France Vanguet debate, Egypt's standoff comes to a head with us to talk about it from Cairo. She's been following the story from Tahir Square all day. France Vanguet correspondent Catherine Stapley uh, from Luxor, Abdul Maugud Dardari of the Muslim Brotherhood back to Freedom and Justice a Party. Uh, welcome back to the debate. She supports the opposition Egyptian author uh, Mira Deridan. Welcome back to, to the debate. And uh, public relations consultant Arnaud Castagnier, he watches Egypt uh, very closely. Uh, from London, attorney Saad Jabbar uh, joins us as uh, well. Thank you for being with us. The uh, France Vent Get Debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and on Twitter. Our hashtag F24Debate. We saw the rousing cheers go up there as a military helicopter circles over Tahir Square. Um, Catherine Stapley, we've seen, uh, we're, we're just getting word, Catherine Stapley, the link is gone down. We're going to try to uh, get back to Catherine uh, in a moment. Um, we're seeing that uh, the, uh, the square once again for the fourth day running. And again, this is happening, both pro and anti uh, uh, Morsi rallies taking place. As, uh, as we get m more news at this point, the Egyptian army again erecting barbed wires and barriers around of the barracks where President Morsi was working, deploying armored vehicles and troops to prevent his supporters from uh, m marching from a nearby rally to his palace. Um, the anticipation uh, at this point, Abdul Maugud Dardari, is, uh, our correspondent was reporting earlier that this is, could all be in preparation for a speech by the defense minister. I'll put the question to you, is it a coup? It looks... A gloomy day for democracy today in Egypt. I still trust that the Egyptian army will not betray the will of the Egyptian people. I'm still trying to keep a little bit of optimism. And the, the, it is very dangerous if it is a coup. It is dangerous for the Egyptian people. It is dangerous for the interest of Europe and for the interest of the United States. It is dangerous for everyone. It is a lose lose uh, uh, situation. Uh, I hope it does not happen. Uh, it is the first time we have a democracy for decades, if not for centuries. To end it this way uh, is not the right way. It's again, it's a violation of human rights, violation of the rule of uh, 
of law and and it is not good for anyone. I mean, uh, Islamism is presenting a moderate democratic alternative. I am very concerned that extre extremism will be on the rise now. But I am still optimistic that the uh, national Egyptian army will not betray the will of the Egyptian people. Mira Daridan, is it a coup? Well, I, I would like to reassure Mr. Daldari, it is absolutely not a coup. When you have 16 million people every day in the streets, you cannot call that a coup. You can only call that the popular will. And this is democracy. Democracy is not getting people to vote on a constitution they do not understand. Democracy is not to get people to just take a, something to say they voted. This is not democracy. Democracy is what we see in the street today. But it's, a fair, but it's a fair point oh, well. made. It's a fair point made that uh, many of the Egyptians uh, in Tahrir Square worked hard to get the military out of power after six decades. Well, there's a difference. Now, there's a difference between the SCAF, who governed the country for several Supreme months. The Council of the Armed Forces. Exactly. And who actually handed power on to the Muslim Brotherhood. This is the SCAF. And who did not write a constitution before electing a president. Who did not write a constitution before electing the legislative powers. This is the SCAF. Today, what we see is not the SCAF. We see the army protecting the people in the streets. Yesterday, 16 people die at university in Egypt. This, sir, is not democracy. People killing students, this is not democracy, to my mind at least. All right, the, the casualties were on both sides, apparently, at Cairo University. Surely, but back. Cairo University invaded? Why? Um, the, uh, uh, you will agree that uh, it is fuzzy. We don't know what the defense minister is going to say. What do you want him to say? I would like him to say that power is back to people, that there will be a, a council that will now rule the country until such time as... Who should be the head of that council? Uh, several people should be getting together be and acknowledge... Or well, there should be a military in the middle of these civilians, but mostly civilians. And I would like to see the army just setting up this process and not governing the country. Abdul Magud Dardari, what would you like to see the... the uh, Defense Minister say. Yeah, let me clarify a couple of points. Those who are killed in front of Cairo University uh, are not students. Those are supporters of President Morsi. The supporters of President Morsi are killed in many different places, and their centers are burned down by the so-called opposition. It is mercenaries. Uh, miss. Uh, that is not democracy. It, I'm very surprised that an Egyptian will invite the army and call it a, a democracy. The we army is the people, the sir. Just also. let me finish. Let also. me finish. Please, let me, as I listen to you unwillingly, so please listen to me unwillingly as well. I will. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we've suffered from the military. To tell any human sensible being in the world that military is democratic is disastrous. I, I cannot believe that I am talking to an Egyptian. We've suffered for so many decades from the dictatorship does not know democracy. President Morsi was elected in a democratic way and he should leave office in a democratic way. We will all regret. It is sad that I see people in Tahrir Square carrying officers who killed them just a year ago and tortured them for so many years, carrying them on their shoulder. My invitation to my fellow Egyptians, please don't make your hatred for Mohammed Morsi invite dictatorship and uh, the end of the rule of law. So, and so Mr. Dardari, what do you want to hear the defense minister, the head of the army, say when he speaks? I would like him to say that he's working hard to bring the different uh, political forces together uh, to work together on the roadmap uh, suggested by the president, because the president said exactly what any human being would welcome is there is a roadmap for election. Let us have election in two, three months, parliamentary election. Let us talk to the people of Egypt and let them elect the parliament. The parliament will form the government. The government will be more powerful than the president himself. And by this, we keep democracy. By this, we keep the change of power. Now, you force the first president elected in a democratic way, by power, by military force, is the recipe for a disaster. All right. Earlier, a spokesperson for the opposition coalition 
National Democratic Front claimed that uh, uh, General Abdel Fattah al-Sisi held a group meeting with uh, the NDF uh, spokesperson, uh, the former uh, nuclear watchdog chief Mohammed al-Baradai. Um, he also met with Muslim cleric uh, al-Azhar Sheikh Ahmed al-Tayeb and Coptic Pope Tawadros II. Um, this, this is according to a, a spokesperson for the National Democratic Front. Um, we are wondering at this point what General Sisi uh, will say. Arnaud Castagnier, uh, what can he say? What should he say? Well, I, ho I hope he's going to say that um, the, the, the potential transition that is going to be done by the military is going to be very different from the transition between February uh, 2011 to, uh, to uh, 2012, because it has been quite a disaster. It has been a disaster for the economy. It has been a disaster for the uh, for the civil rights. Uh, so that you're, you're referring to that first transition phase yeah, after by, by Mubarak the left the and before by, yeah, by the scaf. Uh, Hosni, uh, before sorry Mohammed Morsi was, was yeah, sworn in. Yeah, by the scaf. I hope he's going to. I, I hope he's going to uh, to say that the the next transition is going to. Um, is going to uh, to the u unite. Transition. Yeah, the, the second transition is going to unite much more people in the in the political landscape of Egypt. Otherwise, we may expect similar protests in uh, one year time. Um, let me bring in at this point in the conversation Saad Jabbar. Uh, we've had so many unexpected twists since the first protests of the Arab Spring began. Uh, well, some say they began in, in your native Algeria, um, uh, but they but they quickly graduated to Tunisia and, and Egypt. Uh, what's going on now? Is, is how do you view it? I think the the Tunisian example should have been followed by the Muslim brothers in trying from the beginning to recruit or to really get into the process as many opposition forces as possible, plus the youth who are not organized in any institution or a party, and to work steadily towards, first of all, laying the ground really for a democratic process, secondly, for the Muslim brothers to end the fear from them, and third, if the Muslim brothers to say we are not an alternative to a regime, but we are competitors for, a, uh, for, for power, and at this stage, no person who has looked at what happened in Tunisia and other countries where it was thanks to all sections of the society who have gone to the streets in order to topple the dictatorship. If you allow polarization, like in Egypt, between the Muslim brothers and, let's say, the uh, ex-regime or Ancien regime, because the Ancien regime is still there, all you have done is you removed the Mubarak and removed some top military leaders, but all those who have vested interest from the wealthy, those who made billions out of the ex-regime, the ones, the networks which the Ministry of the Interior were using, the intelligence services, and so on. Therefore, the lesson has not been learned from what happened in Tunisia in order to create some sort of proper coalition. This is the epoch of coalitions. It is not for the winner takes all. If I were Morsi or the brothers, why would I run a country? Take the burden where I don't have any money, where I have a burden of 60 years of military rule. Those who are happy to talk about the army stepping right, so in. So try to try to try to build a coalition. Just a one one comment coming through uh, on Twitter. It is not a coup. It is 33 million people in the streets chanting against Morsi. Leave and let us live. We want our Egypt back. Mahmoud saying that. Um, Let's go now to uh, Tahir Square and uh, uh, France 24 correspondent Catherine Stapley. Catherine, uh, the turnout as it's been since the weekend seems huge behind you there. Sorry, Francois, I can't, I can't hear what you're saying. Ah, well, that, that, that's further to my question. Just the turnout again seems huge and the amount of noise must uh, prove it. Yeah, I mean, here at Tahrir, the absolute jubilation that's going on here because uh, people are now convinced that the army is behind the opponents uh, of President Mohamed Morsi and that President Mohamed Morsi is on his way out. And uh, we've been uh, hearing from the presidential uh, spokesman that uh, his whereabouts are actually unknown at the moment and all contact has been cut off with him. But uh, people here are in absolute celebratory mode. They feel that they've rested back 
their Egypt from the hands of the Muslim Brotherhood. And I mean, I remember talking to people during the uh, the presidential election runoff, and they were said to me they were faced with a, a choice between two evils, and they had to choose between them. One, of course, was uh, Ahmed Shafiq, who narrowly lost out to President Mohamed Morsi. He was the uh, a stalwart of, uh, of, of ousted President Hosni Mubarak's regime. And then, of course, we had uh, President Mohamed, uh, Mohamed Morsi, Dr. Mohamed Morsi, from the Muslim Brothers. And people at the time were telling me they really didn't know who to vote for. Activists, of course, could not bring themselves to vote for anybody who had uh, been part of the Falul or, or remnants of the Mubarak regime. And so that they were telling me at the time they would vote for Dr. Morsi just to keep the uh, Mubarak stalwarts out of government. But they also said to me at that time, we'll do it, but we'll see what happens. And if we don't like him, then we're going to try and get rid of him. And that's exactly what we've been seeing over the past few days. And of course, uh, this only tells part of the story. We know that there's another uh, demonstration taking place, uh, several other demonstrations taking place uh, in favor uh, of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, the Associated Press, Catherine, now reporting that uh, uh, in several parts of the capital, army troops backed by armor, including commandos, have been deployed uh, in various parts uh, of the capital. And the U.S. State Department saying the situation remains fluid. It cannot confirm whether or not a military coup is underway. Uh, Catherine, we're still waiting for General Sisi to speak. Yes, indeed we are. We've been waiting for this uh, statement from the army uh, uh, for a while now. As far as the people here are concerned, the 48-hour deadline, that ultimatum that they gave that said that both sides needed to reach a consensus is now expired. And we've been waiting for the uh, army to, to make some sort of statement to tell people what's going on. We know there have been frantic uh, talks between uh, the uh, top army generals and members of the opposition, and also the uh, Coptic Pope, Tawadros II, and the uh, Muslim leader here, uh, the Sheikh of Al-Azhar. They've been holding uh, crisis meetings today to see the best way of moving forward. Now, of course, as you mentioned, there are two demonstrations uh, alone here in Cairo. There were people supporting uh, President Mohamed Morsi. One is at the Nasser city outside a huge mosque called Rab al -Adawiyya. And people have been holding a sit-in there for over a week now. And also there is, uh, of course, the other demonstration uh, at Cairo University where those uh, uh, vicious clashes took where those place clashes took place, Catherine, were, uh, were I'm going to ask now, you about this. what's going on at the moment is that uh, we're hearing that the army have uh, moved into the area where those uh, supporters of uh, Mohamed Morsi are, uh, are uh, out in force. And, All right, so we're going to uh, continue. We, we're, Catherine, I'm going to have to interrupt you at this point. Because, uh, Catherine, I'm going to have to interrupt you. I, I, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm going to have to briefly interrupt you. We're going to have to take a very quick break, and then we're going to go back uh, to Egypt and with our panel here in the France 24 debate.